All right, I got a short little video I wanted to share with you. Um, most of my insights come from practical experience and practical application in different sessions. So this one comes not only from my sessions, but my personal life. And uh, the name of this one is Will and Voice. If you all haven't seen some of my other videos, um, hopefully you have, so this will make a little more sense. Um, but the chakra system, the seven major chakras, are really misunderstood. Um, the lower three chakras are masculine in nature and the upper three are feminine. So every, every one of the lower three chakras has a partner in the upper three and vice versa. And um, the one that I've been really working on my life uh, period here is uh, solar plexus and voice. And they go together without your solar plexus power, you have no voice, and without your voice to set boundaries, you don't have any power. And um, this has been a, a theme throughout my life, and as a result, coincidentally, just the people that are drawn to me typically have this theme playing out in their life. My other gifts have happened to be this third eye vision and uh, crown chakra opening, um, but my, my lifelong lesson has been about solar plexus and throat. So I'm always learning different layers as I clear stuff out, and as I clear stuff out, I can help other people. And as a result, I'm sharing this video with you because um, it's all about balance. Um, we tend to swing back and forth kind of like a pendulum, and this is what this picture is supposed to depict, depict here, is like a pendulum swing. So on the left side, we have the energy being low, and on the right side, we have it high. Don't worry about trying to read it. Hopefully you can read it, but I'm going to go over what's here on the page to begin with. So ideally, to be in proper balance, to have power, you are in complete harmony. And there's a harmony that needs to happen not only within one particular chakra, but with its partner. So example, the solar plexus needs to be in complete partnership with the voice and vice versa. And through different patterns and different issues, we tend to um, have a particular chakra too strong or too weak. I, I went to with too weak. Um, I've uh, had a pretty uh, domineering father, dogmatic, and um, I went the way of the aloof uh, personality. One of my favorite books, I never read any other, any other books after this, but I did like Celestine Prophecies. Of the nine insights. Um, I never read any of the other books, but that this one really stood out years ago when it was a big thing. And one particular part I read in there, I, I only read that book once, but it's always stayed with me. In that book, they talk about four different personality types. There's the aloof, the poor me, the intimidator, and the interrogator. So on the left side, when your energy is weak, you tend to be an aloof or a poor me. And if your energy is too strong in this particular area, you tend to be um, a uh, intimidator or an interrogator. Um, I, had an, I had an intimidator for a father and an interrogator for a mother, and I became an aloof as a result. Um, I don't have time to go into that completely in this, but basically an in, somebody that interrogates somebody over and over makes somebody become aloof, and somebody that's an intimidator can create a poor me. Um, and it's a way of getting each other's, it's a way of protecting your energy. So if somebody's asking me a bunch of questions, I go into the aloof mode, which makes me not have to give up a bunch of energy. And I'm working to get out of that, out of that pattern because any of those patterns, poor me, aloof, interrogator, intimidator, they're all, every one of those are out of balance. And I'm going to explain to you why um, in this little video here. <clears throat> so. Throughout my life, I tended to be on the weaker side here, and I'm going to I'm going to show I'm going to go across the uh, sides here. And typically, through our growth, we swing from one polarity to the other, and then back and forth, and eventually we find this balance point. I'm coming more and more to my center balance point on the will and the voice. So I'm going to I'm going to go through the list as it is on the left and on the where the solar plexus and voice is weak. So with the solar plexus and voice is weak, chaos. Uh, the sense of being out of control and resigned to reality is in this column. Being powerless, being a pushover or a wimp. Fear, which is tension coming in. Feeling discouraged, defenseless, whimpering, lacks the ability to, to direct will and intention with your voice. 
And, in, and to direct your energy, you need to have a strong voice. Not yelling, and I'm going to go over that in a second, but a strong voice. And in this column, typically lets things happen to them, and they appear to be a whiny victim. On the, uh, on the other polarity of that, when, when that chakra system is too strong, which is just as out of balance as being too weak, neither one is better at all. On the opposite extreme, you have controlling, fighting for control, heavy-hearted, they're overpowering instead of powerless, they're pushy, like a bully, instead of being a pushover, and they're angry, which is tension going out, instead of being fearful, tension going in. They tend to be stubborn, whereas on the weak side, they tend to be discouraged. And, they, and on the strong side, they tend to be defensive instead of defenseless on the weak side. They tend to do a lot of yelling and anger, which is pushing too hard with will. And what happens when you push too hard on reality with will, you actually create a resistance. So you, you cause a problem there. And over the holidays, um, Thanksgiving, got to play some football. And it's been a long time since I played football. And one interesting thing about sports, sports, sports teach, teaches some pretty good lessons. And one thing about um, football that I like is it's not about strong arming the football. If you just like pull your arm all the way back and just throw it crazy as hard as you can, that ball doesn't fly very well. The tricky thing about getting that football to go a far distance is typically you don't even pull your arm back all the way. Kind of back center with your head and then you push your arm forward and you let the ball go from your fingers kind of in a spiral motion. And that's really the kind of energy you want to create in reality. It's not about just throwing shit into reality trying to make it happen. It's about having a strong force and a strong will but also working with the energy that's around you. And I'll get back to that in a second. Also in the strong column, they tend to make things happen instead of on the weak column where they just let things happen to them. And you may know people like this or you may yourself be like this. It's like, for example, you're in traffic and you're irritated and you want to get somewhere so you just start getting angry and you're pushing, pushing like you're going to magically make everybody move. <laughs> it doesn't work, right? All you do is get more and more pissed. Um, so people that you see getting angry a lot and are pushing on reality is they're actually coming from a weak spot, not a strong spot. Because if you're having to get angry at reality and yell at it, you're actually saying you're weaker than that. And I'll get to that in a second. And they, they appear to be, in general, overly critical instead of being wimpy on the other side. Now the key is to be completely balanced, as in anything. And to be complete, completely balanced is when you're in the center, when you're neither too weak or too strong, the center is being carefree. So you're not out of control, and you're not fighting for control, you just have a sense of carefree. Things are just flowing along. Um, in the center, you're present. Instead of being overpowering and powerless, you're present in the moment and adjusting appropriately. You're empowered instead of being a pushover and uh, overpowering. Oops, I had a call, sorry about that. So back to the video. Um, so in the overpowering column you have, uh, in the strong column you have overpowering, in the weak column you have powerless, and in the center you're present. So if you're present, you know how to act, which sometimes does take being a little forceful, and you know when to not be so forceful. There's a balance there. And in the center column is being empowered, where in, this pushy, in the strong column is being pushy, and in the weak column is being a pushover. Empowered, if you're having to be a pushy bully, you're actually not very strong at all because you're trying to push on reality, but it's coming from a weak spot. If you're a bully, you really don't have any power. Empowering is being centered within yourself, speaking up, but not yelling. It's projecting a power into a reality um, that doesn't need to be pushy, and it's centered. It's not too weak and it's not too strong. In the center column, you're being peaceful or you're feeling peaceful, which is no tension, where anger is tension going out and fear is tension coming in. Peaceful is right in the center. And this isn't to say that anger and fear are about emotions because all emotions have an appropriate place in reality. Anger is sometimes needed. Anger is what we, the, 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 the motion, the emotion that pushes us to change things that are wrong. Fear helps us and protects us from things that, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe we shouldn't go down that dark alley. It's like an intuitional thing. 
The problem is, is when we get stuck in patterns. If you're angry all the time, if, you're, if your normal resting state is irritated, that is a bad out of sync uh, place to be. Whereas fearful is just as bad. It, it's stuck in a, in a pattern. So, but ideally in the center is you're peaceful and there's no tension, no tension at all. Again, no emotion is wrong. Sometimes you have to have anger to push you out of a situation. But once you've changed the situation, you should come back to peaceful. And sometimes you're fearful, and that's appropriate, and then you come back to peaceful. It's when we get stuck in these patterns with a pushy, angry bully. You know, really, there may be something going on at home, and they have no, they have no ability to change their environment, so they have all this anger and tension built up because they can't express. And then what happens is they go to school or something like that, and they let that out. And the same happens on the other spectrum, where, where the fearful person is, is, being, is going inward. In the center column, you have courage where in the strong column you have being too stubborn or in the weak column is discouraged. So courage is like you're, you're like going for it. You're, you're hanging, hanging yourself out there and you're speaking up for yourself and doing things that you need to. In the center column is security. So security comes from being within your own power and speaking up for yourself. You know, in the weak column we have defenseless and in the strong column we have being overly defensive. Sometimes when we don't have a very strong voice that was like a ploy, like the poor me. It's like if I, if I act like I'm defenseless and uh, I'm not very strong, people will notice and give to me. Well, that sometimes, work, but, sometimes works, but when you're an adult, you have to come from owning your power and stating what you need. You can't always expect people to see what you need and give it to you. You've got to be able to stand up. Now, you don't just push yourself, push yourself on others, but you state what you need not only to other people but to God and you know you and when you speak what you want you're being honest with your feelings in the center we have speaking with authority when speaking with authority there is no need to yell if you have to yell to get your point across you've lost your authority what comes to mind here is uh, I don't know if y'all have seen the dog whisperer um, I haven't seen it in forever but um, Cesar Romero was the guy that did all the dog training Whenever he went into a family, it wasn't the dog that was screwed up. It was the humans that were screwed up. And I really liked how he dealt with the animals. He, he, he had a good example. Like he would go into a house and here's this, um, um, this, this person that owns an animal. And they're trying to get their animal to do something by yelling at the animal. But the animal's not doing, doing it. But Caesar had that powerful presence of saying something in a strong, forceful way, but not yelling. And it's a huge difference between yelling, which is really just pushing too hard on reality, which causes resistance, or whimpering, which is not speaking up. Whimpering is the lack of ability to direct your will or intention. So if you're trying to create something in reality, and you're like speaking to, imagine you're, you know, you're giving an order to the universe, I would like to be wealthy, as opposed to yelling, like, you know, I, I need this now, I need this, that's not going to work either. But if you have this strong and speak with authority, it's like, I choose to have joy, health, and happiness in my life now. That's speaking with authority, presence, and being in the moment. And if you look at the word authority, the first part of that word is author. You author your life when you speak with authority, not yelling and not whimpering. In the center column, being balanced, you're consciously and with intent co-creating life. You're, you're flowing with life. If you're in the too strong column, is you're trying to make it happen. So you're angry, you're pushing, you're trying to make traffic move, and you're just getting more frustrated and angry, and that builds up over time, and now you're in a pattern. And now you're in an angry rut, and now your life sucks. <laughs> if you go into the other column where it's too weak, is you just let things happen to you, and you kind of moan and groan, and you know take the victim, victim place. And that's just as negative as being too pushy. In the center is you appear to be in charge of your life because you are in charge of your life. In the strong column, you appear to be overly critical because you're trying to, trying to control reality. And in the weak column, you appear to be a whiny victim because you're just letting things happen to you. So my whole point of this video is you want to come into the center where you're balanced, present, empowered. You're feeling peaceful. There's no tension. You're courageous. You feel the security because you're in with your own power. You're centered. You're speaking with authority, and you're consciously and with intent co-creating your life, and you're in charge of your life as a result. Um, there's some other aspects here about we cannot be completely peaceful while we have our defenses up. So if you yourself or you know somebody that's always angry and pushing on reality and they're stuck in that angry pattern, all they're going to do is keep 
pushing life away from them. Because if you're pushy, you're pushing the way the very thing that you need. Um, there's also another video you might look at. Uh, you can see the the link down here um, to a, a video called War, one of my earlier videos, and it goes into this and to give another example. So my main focus here is to realize that you should never be too pushy with your words and your voice, and you should never be too weak. Do you want to come? You want to come in balance. So your solar plexus, your will, and your voice are in balance. You don't have to be pushy. Things happen. So if you're if you're fighting against reality, which is in the too pushy column, if you're fighting against reality, you're not in an empowered state. If you feel like you've got to fight against something, you are disempowered, not empowered. And if you're just letting things happen to you, of course, you already know that's disempowered. But don't be mistaken. When you're being pushy and angry and trying to control things and trying to change this and trying to change that from that angry, push, pushy area or a stance, that's just as negative as being a whimpering wimp. So... Anyway, I hope you hope this makes sense and about being centered and balanced. I honor that place in you when you're in that place in you and I'm in that place in me. We are one. We are made of the same star stuff. We breathe the same air, walk the same earth, and drink the same water. Namaste.